Well, if someone asks me what Big Nazar is, I usually will say a larger than life size interactive creature puppet theater troupe. We perform in all kinds of spaces that we are proud of the fact that we are able to do our work in almost any environment. That it's not a pain, you know, to have to change the show, but actually part of the creative process. We like to incorporate all kinds of other performance techniques and artists in our group, and we love to collaborate. And that Big Nazar is an educational endeavor, and we, we work in schools and teach and, and teach creature making to empower other people to kind of do what we're doing. As a teacher at the Rhode Island School of Design, he wants to share his craft with his students. We do commission work, commercial work, and we are a rock band and uh, street theater and stage, you know, so pretty much everything, and some TV and film occasionally. Big Nazo is always kind of unpredictable, so we like to sort of contrast the mellow stuff with sort of erratic, wild stuff and keep people wondering. I just found all these doodles that I do in envelopes, you know, while I'm on the phone. But some crazy stuff happens. I mean, I get off the phone, I'm like, what is this? I always uh, wonder if the conversation influenced the work. But occasionally there's, you know, this really cool stuff. Like, I, you know, I'd love to actually build some of this, these pieces. They really represent my sort of subconscious process. Oh my God, help me, help! I think I've always been somebody who wanted to be outside of his own body, wanted to be everywhere. I was motivated to connect with people because I think that as a child, being the child of Italian immigrants who were new to the country and hadn't completely found a way to fit in perfectly, you know, as a young kid who could speak English, and Italian, I'd be brought into sort of adult situations and helping to bridge the gap. Birth child, these are, this is my lady friend. This is our second So I think that that perspective really made me understand the, the quote unquote alien perspective. I mean, the first time I came to Providence was to to look at Rhode Island School of Design. I was like a high school senior, you know, on the road with my parents. I remember, you know, having a real visceral, intense experience with Providence. We had gotten lost um, coming up here. We came out in Man Manton Avenue in Olneyville. The big top flea market was happening. It was amazing, like having come from upstate New York and coming into good old New England with its mill architecture and its sort of crazy cobblestone streets and People were carrying their old mirrors and their antique grandfather clocks and weird polyester suit racks, etc. And there were so many character types. I mean, in my imagination, I still think I saw peg-legged, eye-patch-wearing, cackling, toothless guys. You know, that's the way I remember it, just like everybody was over the top. When I think of it now, it's probably very similar to the experience that people might have if they see our creatures, you know, crossing the street unexpectedly. I kind of think I subconsciously recreated that sense of wonder and awe of how weird the town seemed. When I construct puppets, it's like I don't want to have too clear an intention. I like the idea of kind of getting lost in the materials and, and then subjecting those materials to sort of all these other variables like time and space and weather and, you know, just basically context. These posters is essentially the, the world's slowest comic strip. Each year is one panel of this strip. I don't know how many people are aware that there's a sequential illustration in progress here. I just think that that's kind of fun. I just decided it was time to, you know, kind of explore the world and take that young man's journey into the unknown. And so I left Providence and I traveled Professor starting in, in London and worked my way uh, into France, to Switzerland, into Italy. In Europe, you know, the idea of puppets, it's very expansive. It's the feet of the animated object. I mean, this experience of traveling in Europe, I think, was where I kind of got that glimpse of what I wanted to do with my life in a really clear way. I was blown away by what could be done with the medium. This is where I kind of, I think, the template for Big Nazar began. The commedia tradition in Italy, improvisational, quick change, theater on the streets, you know, had an influence on me. Then I wanted to expand on that by creating a spectacle, you know, by having 
I had to work with other people so that we could kind of create a tribe or a bunch of characters who could sort of take over the piazza and the space. So the medium of puppetry does that really well. The reason that a lot of my work um, was formed in street theater was out of necessity. I worked with what I had, which was um, the sidewalk. And we just tried to transform those spaces into our theater. What does it look like, all right? I think all I wanted to say back then was just like, isn't life amazing? Isn't life surprising? You thought you knew what was going to happen today when you got up in the morning, and here we are. Shouldn't you think of every day as being something that's going to potentially be this awesome surprise? When I first started performing in the Big Nazo style, I seriously did not really know what I was doing. I mean, you know, and I, I'm proud of that. I mean, I like the idea that it wasn't an informed sensibility. I wasn't imitating something that I had seen somewhere else. It was sort of just really discovering the medium on my own. I mean, I was, a, you know, a visual artist, and I studied sculpture and illustration, film, video was like one of my main concentrations. As an artist, I didn't want to be in the galleries just for the sake of showing the pieces, and I didn't want to make objects that were collectible, and I didn't want just to make things that were reproduced, you know, for print. But I felt that everything that I was doing was constantly becoming something else when the context changed. As a performer and just as an artist in general, you know, my interest is just to continually combine media, find a way where everything is everything. So now what I'm interested in is how all this stuff plus the multimedia that I'm working with, the green screen effects, interacting with the live characters and the web. I feel like all technology is just bringing us back to that same way of just visualizing potentiality. That's what's so exciting. My journey has been one of crafting the confusion, you know, into something that had a direction. In the end, it's just as simple as uh, giving yourself permission to romp around this world and uh, to just find your place in it in a nonsensical way. The amazement of the crowd equals that, or maybe surpasses the shock and surprise that they get when they're in the movies. So there's still something about it happening in the real world, bringing fantasy into the real world that gets back to that idea, that goal that's beneath everything I do, of just sharing with people that life is absolutely exciting. Life is always unpredictable. You know, it's not something to be taken for granted, but that it has so much potential. And that it's the choices that we make while living it that are a lot like the choices that a performer makes in a live context. You know, you're making a choice and it leads to something. It's the same way with how our lives work. But of course, all this could have been said much better by a puppet character. What you talking about, Quad?